Howard Zinn was a good man. He was a great man. He wasn't great like Alexander the Great. He wasn't great like Napoleon. He didn't conquer the world. That he mustered the courage to be sensitive to the pain of people's suffering. And he lived it. He connected the struggle for justice with finding joy in serving others so that the process had something to do with the product. And that's the best that America has to offer. And that's why I drove here four hours and I got to be back in Philadelphia at seven o'clock this morning. But I'm going back with a smile on my face because something happened here tonight. Oh yes, something very, very special happened here tonight. And it had something to do with the quality of each and every one of you here. It had something to do with the giants who came through. You talking about Bernice Johnson, right? Yeah. Genius. Sister Medea Benjamin on the ground all the time struggling. Marion Wright Edelman, for me, she's the greatest prophetic figure in the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. The brothers need to move aside and understand that the sisters like Fannie Lou Hamer and Marion Wright Edelman are towering figures. Day in and day out, keeping the vision going, courage enacted, and still got love in her heart. Give it up for Sister Marion. We love you. And we love Brother Peter, too. Oh, yes. And so many of the others, I, I, I know I'm skipping all kind of folk, but I don't know about you, but I'm just so fired up. I could go back to New Jersey unaided. I don't need my car tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's partly because Howard Zinn understood the real secret of being a long distance runner for justice. He knew there was an intimate relation between the social and the spiritual. And by spiritual, what I mean is being able to sustain your commitment so that you are marathon. You see. He understood the relation between the political and the personal even before the feminist movement hit strong. Because he had that distinctive feature of a mature person, he was that humble radical. Now, sometimes that's an oxymoron among some of our brothers and sisters. <laughs> it's hard to find humble radicals. Now, I'm not talking about the highly sophisticated kind of refined ones who give you the analysis and can't wait for you to follow them in the leadership. No! I'm talking about the one that has fallen in love with those sly stone called everyday people. That's how it's in. When he heard James Cleveland sing about the dignity of ordinary people, Howard Zinn understood what that, what that Negro genius was singing about. Because he knew, in fact, that if they could muster the courage to organize and mobilize, if they could muster the courage to have a vision that was critical of not just the presidency, not just of an office, but of a whole world capitalist economy obsessed with greed and profit and would do anything to crush people that stand in the way of their pursuit of profit and greed. Oh yes, that's how it's in we're talking about. I knew him for 41 years. We went to jail together. We laughed together. We tried to sing together. I was little Eddie Kendricks. He got a little Bruce Springsteen in him, you know. <laughs> and I'll never forget the spirit of him. The connection between the economic and the existential. He was the kind of brother you wanted to go to jail with. <laughs> You had fun in the sale with. It was partly because he was an intellectual. We need to mention that point before we move on to the next stage of this celebration. He fundamentally believed that the life of the mind matters, that ideas make a difference, and it's important that you commit yourself not just to reading, but to thinking critically about what you read. That's why I was so moved by the young folk and the teacher on his way from Japan and now in the States. Oh yes, there will never be a movement in America that doesn't take seriously the life of the mind. 
He was a public intellectual, a democratic intellectual, a radical intellectual, but still humble enough to use what he had in service for what we in the black church call the least of these. Uh, the old Franz Fanon called the wretched of the earth. Brother Bill Fletcher knows what I'm talking about. The ones who are forgotten. The poor ones that Sister Marion was talking about. Their condition denied or the indifference toward their suffering or the tolerance of them going through hell and high water and somehow that becoming natural and necessary rather than wrong and unnecessary. That's the Howard Zinn that we will celebrate in this space from now on. We want to thank you, Brother Andy, for this. Thank you for all of you all coming here tonight and take the spirit of Howard Zinn with you because we got some struggles to do we got some struggling to do this empire is in decay it's in decline and it's trying to devour the very prophetic traditions that can renew and reinvigorate it and we got to do it together red black brown yellow poor working class and those who are doing well willing to commit some class suicide and go against their best friends and say I stand with everyday people I stand with ordinary people because it's right because it's just and that's the way I want to go down so when they put me in the coffin they can say the same thing they said about how I was in that's for each and every one of us and let us not forget my last point and that is Friday is the 85th Birthday of the great John Coltrane. <laughs> and you can't talk about how it was in unless you talk about a love supreme. Because Howard understood that justice is what love looks like in public, just like tenderness is what love feels like in private. And Howard always went hand in hand with Sister Roz. And when you saw them together, they were a dynamic duo. And they both were militants for tenderness, as well as crusaders for justice and long distance freedom fighters. That's the combination we're going to have to have if we have a chance in this present, bleak, dark, difficult, but unpredictable moment. Because we got some surprises for America and the world. Oh, yeah. Y'all stay close.